But I think applying pieces of it and actually doing it over time. And there's no secret. There's a lot of little things you got to get right. So if you're running a business, you know, there's lots of people that have done it. Talk to them, get mentors, talk to people, get a group, mastermind, and just immerse yourself. But there's a lot of little things you got to do. So either hire people to do them or you got to do them yourself. And that's what it takes. That's just that there's no secret sauce here. That's a big lesson there. Welcome to another episode of the Hard to Market Podcast. Um, I'm here with Kevin. Kevin, welcome. Kevin from Array Digital. You want to give yourself an introduction here so that I don't mess it up? I'll do my best. I appreciate you having me on the show. I uh, enjoyed our conversation the other day and ready to talk about some podcasting. But um, I guess a quick background on me. Um, I own, uh, really, i part of owner in, the, in three digital marketing agencies, uh, Array Digital, is um, our first agency, our main agency. And we focus on helping law firms with web, content, SEO, and really just anything to do with driving organic leads uh, for mm -hmm. the firm. And a uh, team of 25 there, um, own two more agencies uh, that focus on different niche industries. So we're probably around 40 you know, employees full-time. And uh, podcasting has been... Something we've done for, for many years has been part of our uh, history, uh, whether it's talking about entrepreneurship, growing a company, uh, good, the bad, the ugly. But also, it's been a big part of our, our brands and connecting with our prospects and really just getting our foot in the door in the legal industry uh, as far as uh, a rate digital is concerned or the HVAC industry with another company we have. So podcast has been just a, a, a pivotal part of our success and getting to meet folks and, and building relationships. And I, I love it. So, so I yeah, I mean, I want to get, I want to dig into it. And um, for, for those of you listening, uh, you, you don't, you, you may not know Kevin's uh, huge. He's recorded like a billion episodes or, or close to it at this point. And so the first question I have is what made you think, um, what made you think that rather than going sort of down your own road with the, what you're offering for your attorney clients that podcasting was going to be a, an effective business development tool? Well, that's a good question. I mean, obviously, you know, we do digital marketing, we do SEO, uh, advertising and stuff like that online. And, and we do that for ourselves to some degree. But at the end of the day, um, connecting with people, uh, them seeing you because mine's a video based podcast as well as mm -hmm. audio, uh, but really showing that you understand their industry and how their business works and bringing on experts and people in their industry to let them talk and share. Um, you know, really, we're giving them a platform to tell us what they've done to be successful. And at the same time, I run a business. That's no different than owning a law firm. I just happen to be I own a marketing firm, a company. So any lawyers listening, you know, you're a business owner who happens to be a lawyer. Um, and so that my you know, podcast is really a, a dives deep into the operations and marketing and sales and hiring and firing and culture and, and all these things. And so it allowed me to really understand their business because I don't own a law firm, I own a marketing company, right? So it allows me to really understand, and I can take that information back to my team. I can also it also helps me again <laughs> make those connections, which really I'm, we don't have a sales organization where we're like cold call sales emails and we're we're just trying to bang the phones and and like sell people. Um, I prefer <laughs> people to say, "Hey, Kevin, uh, I really like what you said. I really like I've been listening to you." Or they're a guest of mine that's like, "Hey." We need your help. Would you be interested to talk to us? And it's just the way I prefer to do things, and it's allowed me to to build that. And you know, um, and with good intention, you know, it's it's not something that uh, like oh, we're going to trick everybody and have this this podcast. It's really been an amazing experience, and <laughs> you know, so, it's uh, it has worked well there too. It works so very very well. Does anybody tell you, by the way, that they're going to bait and switch you when it's time to bait and switch you? Or, you know, it's never the conversation that comes up. So when, 
but, well, I, but I, some I have had, and we can get into this more, but um, I've had a guest show up and literally go, "Hey, Kevin, I'm interested to do the podcast, but I don't really care. Uh, but we need to hire you to do this and that, and and so I'll leave it to you if you want to have me on or not. Uh, but I need a proposal from you, and um, <laughs> so." Um, of course, I'm like, no, I definitely want to record the episode with right, you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they signed as a client. They've been a client for two, three years. Um, I've had so, a similar experience where like, you, you get that intro and they're like, uh, can we skip the podcast and just go straight to the, I want to buy a podcast. And I've also had the opposite where it's like, listen, I'm <laughs> never going to fall for this. <laughs> I'm never going to buy this. Can I still be on your podcast? And I'm going, hmm. well, sure. Like, I don't have any problem with this. Like, you you honestly believe that I came to this with like, a, a, you know, uh, concealing the the sales pitch. And I said, yeah, if you want what I got, you want what I got. If you don't, you don't. Exactly. And that's the thing, like, um, and, you know, and I get some people, um, but there's these, my, my guest lineup is almost always attorneys that run their own firms that are worth millions of dollars um you know other legal experts and people that are not lawyers but um that's my primary they're smart they're not stupid um i'm very transparent you know hey uh, i own a marketing agency that works with lawyers around the country um but my show completely legit is built on um you know great foundation over time here's some of the guests we've had on and so they're not they 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 know they get exposure, um, and a lot of lawyers refer each other, so they're they're getting exposed to thousands of other lawyers that they can connect with. Um, but they also are generous usually to say, "Hey, um, so what do you guys do?" And then they'll say, "Hey, let me see if I can connect you with you know my marketing team, or I'm not sure if we need the help or not." And and that's 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 what it's all. It's totally cool. So that's what it's all about. Um, rarely have I had ones be like. Well, is your show big enough for me to be on it? Um, tell me the numbers and the downloads and and how much is it going to cost me to be on the show? And, you know, but few and far between. We get that stuff, too. And uh, the answer is it, the answers are hilarious. <laughs> like I have I, I, I called somebody out once and I'm like, so um, what's your threshold? They're like, well, how many how many downloads you have? And I'm like, well, that's an interesting question. What's your threshold? Like is it is it nine thousand and two or nine thousand and five that makes the difference, right? And like, would you be like, no, no, I'm not going to do nine thousand and two, but nine thousand five, we're good. You start looking into some of the metrics on podcasting very quickly, and you realize that they're all hogwash anyway, right? Like the number of downloads has nothing to do with anything useful. What? Uh, not who they were. You can't connect with them. You know, best thing you can do is try to get them on a mailing list uh, from there within the podcast. You know, get them off yeah. the podcast platform into something else. So yeah, into something you can get attribution for. And I think it's really interesting. But so, so when it comes to the guests that you've developed, and I, I know you've been um, uh, one of your podcasts has got well over a thousand episodes. Uh, I don't know where you're at currently with the Managing Partners podcast, but it's 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 up there. Um, what are you doing to maintain relationships with the folks you've had on the show? No, good point. A uh, good question there. Um, yeah, so we I have a personal podcast that is no longer actively recorded, but we still have it out there uh, called Journey to 100 Million. And our goal here with me and my partner is uh, 100 million in revenue by 2030. And we started documenting where we were, what we were doing. And we have about 1,300 episodes that are that are on that podcast. Yeah. Uh, quick hits, five, 10 minutes, you know, lessons each time, very focused. Um, the Managing Partners podcast is uh, 300 episodes with a little bit of backlog. Uh, so, you know, 300 and, and some. Um, yeah. That is happening. Keeping track of this, I have 300 guests, basically, um, that I have to keep track of. So we have a list in HubSpot uh, that we keep every month. We'll just make sure it's updated. Uh, we also have a spreadsheet of all the guests that maybe rescheduled or canceled. And we can go back to to say, hey, it looks like we never recorded for whatever reason, and we can go back to them and, and follow up. Um, in the HubSpot, we run all our email campaigns, so we have a, a weekly newsletter uh, that also features the guest of that week, but also has articles, uh, our Facebook mastermind group, 
um, stuff in there. And so we're always trying to get back in front of our, our guest. And we created a Facebook mastermind group that every guest gets invited to be a part of. And so we had about 90 to 100 uh, managing partners that are in there as private members. So we're kind of trying to like, hey, you're on the podcast. Now, you know, if you want to join our private group of other managing partners where you all can discuss, it's free. Um, and so we're kind of trying to cultivate that. Um, so, and outside of that, I, I call and email them as often as possible, usually about quarterly, uh, to check in. How's their business doing? Uh, do they want to come back on? Maybe uh, they have a new topic that they could dig up. And I, I usually get a lot of good response there. Oh, hey, Kevin. Man, it's awesome. I, you know, I would love to come back on. And I think I have an awesome topic. Um, we just did this or we grew to this way or we accomplished whatever. And, and they're yeah, excited yeah. to, like, come back and share. And that's awesome. Of course, of course, they're not clients yet, so that's just another chance to get, you know, strengthen that relationship. So it sounds like your podcast plugs into this ecosystem of marketing and sales, where folks can kind of flow between one and the other. Um, how did you How did you decide what parts of that ecosystem to build and when? Well. I guess we'll go to the beginning for anyone listening that doesn't have dun, a podcast dun, dun. And, and they're thinking about it. Um, <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, it's what we did first is said, all right, we are going to start a podcast and this is legit. We're going to start a podcast that we can invite attorneys on so that we can get one-on-one -on -one with them on video and talk to them. And so we didn't have any like flashy marketing. We didn't have a fully polished editing process we didn't have uh social media or other support beyond the episode it was almost like bare bones get on the show and record and so the interesting thing about that is is i had attorneys taking time out of their day to record with me for 45 minutes or something like that and we had zero anything no episodes no backing it wasn't published on half the you know it wasn't I on it wasn't on anything barely, except so we didn't even know what we were gonna do with it yet. <laughs> so so we just started it bare bones with the objective of getting in front of our prospect. And then we're like, then we'll start to add on and build it from there. And so it was really, you know, a rough plan. And um we wanted to make sure that we got their cell and cell phone and, and email address. Um, and then they had a call with us prior to discuss, are they a fit and what, what topics, just like you did with me, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that gets to build that re rapport. And then over time, we added in um, you know assistant with an email and a video that goes out to say, hey, you know, you're about to record with us. Here's what to expect. Here's what to have in place. Um, and they they all like to see the amount of touch points and um, things that we have mostly automated. Um, they're like, wow, that's impressive. Like you always followed up. I got notifications. I got a little video. Um, and that sets the stage for, well, what if you work with us? You know? Yeah. Um, it's awesome. And, and so I get feedback like, wow, you guys are like on top of it. And Christine sent me this and Madison followed up with me on this. And then we have after follow up with graphics and, you know, social posts that they can use. So that's that's kind of where it came to now. And we produce it on a lot of different platforms, LinkedIn Live, YouTube Live, Facebook Live. We invite tons. Now we get them to send it to their list, which they always gladly do. Um, I had one yesterday, sent it to 6,000 attorneys because it's got its own podcast. Um, and so, so now it's just like, okay, where can this go and, and how many different avenues and spider webs can we take it through? So it's uh, it's been, there's so much more we can do now. We have the reputation. We have the, you know, 300 episodes. We have all the highlighted guests. Um, so really the sky's the limit at this point. But to the listeners, we didn't have all that figured out and we didn't even bother to because we knew we had to have a minimal viable product or whatever you want to call it, right? So. They don't get tore up with perfection because um, you won't like the way you sound. 
You want to look like uh, the way you look. Your background won't be perfect. Just start recording and and, and doing it. Um, you know, bring on Brian, hire them. So they can take <laughs> care of all that stuff for you. Yeah, like we'll get to the pain I did. Here. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, so, yeah. what what I I guess when I uh, I want to hear next is a little bit more about uh, what's next, right? So you talked about the amount of opportunity that this has created and where it's going. What, uh, what's next for your podcast? How do you how do you view that uh, integrating with the business uh, even further? And where does it go from here? Yeah, yeah, good point. Um, well, you know, I'd like to, you know, we're about to put some more uh, energy and and money behind promotion of the podcast um, to get it out to other more people. Uh, probably polish up some things. Uh, you know, you can look at my background right now. Um, it's yeah, you know, so we we gonna put a little bit more spit shine on it, I guess. Um, although I don't think people care necessarily; they like just the conversations. All this, you know, that we're authentic. But put a little spit shine, uh, you know, boost it up a little bit. We just applied for some awards uh, for the podcast as well to get a little hardware behind it. Um, but really, where I see it going is like the podcast on the road, if you will. So, uh, case in point, this morning. On LinkedIn, I had a large uh, personal injury firm say, hey, I just heard you on this law firm's podcast that I was featured on. And then I went over, looked you up, and I've been listening to your podcast all night. And he mentioned like certain guests and he was like, it's awesome. And, you know, now we're chatting and uh, they're a big firm. They could be a huge client of ours if if that were it would lead. But so I, I needed I want to do more of that. And so we were just talking out here because we have a multiple co- podcasts for our brands. It's like guest uh, or a podcast takeovers, right? So Brian, I can send you an episode of just me talking, and then send it to you, and you use that for one of your episodes, right? In in place of you showing up that day, basically. Uh, so say if you're looking for a backlog or some extra episodes, reach out to others and say, hey, can I get a clip of one of your episodes? I'm going to feature it on my podcast, and I'll do a little intro saying, hey, you know, i got Brian here today. He's stepping in for me. I'm on vacation, you know, and then push that out to my audience. Right. And so it's like your podcast, your podcast on my podcast. Huh. And then what other opportunities can that get me with one of these folks that I've built relationships with? And a lot of law firms have podcasts. Uh, that I've discovered over the years. So how, you know, so that's the next thing I'm looking to do is reaching out to them and say, Hey, can I do an episode on your podcast and vice versa? We'll do a swap. I like it. So, you you know, something else that comes to mind with this stuff though, that uh, you're, you're now seeing so much content being chucked out there that is, you know, AI generated or, uh, I saw a podcast between two AIs the other day, role playing as like Einstein and Jean Paul Sartre or something, and it was like, <laughs> holy crap! Uh, so, so I think it's important to understand that there's some, some meaningful distinctions there between the work that you do, the work that I do, and uh, podcasting at large, particularly the entertainment style stuff. Sure. Yeah. How do you see the AI, you know, getting into this space for you, and um, what does it mean for for Ray Digital moving forward? No, it's interesting. Um, you know, we don't need people anymore. You know, we just <laughs> give them the script, that, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, we're we're leveraging AI where we can. We use it for uh, ideas, topics, um, and uh, what we're. And we're digital marketing, right? We have a whole content team that, of real people that write and, uh, you know, their future f- for those kinds of folks, you know. I promise they're real people. I promise. Yeah, they're real people. Um, but AI can be leveraged for a lot of things. And so, but I, I think what we would be careful with is leverage for the things that, that are ancillary and tasking and things that uh, you don't need to waste time on. But at the same time, don't you can't overdo it and um, over automate. Um, so I, you know, as we're using it for sure uh, in areas, but as far as like the podcast itself, you know, show notes, uh, descriptions, and write-ups, uh, captions. Uh, so we're using it for a lot of things already. But so, but I don't hope. I hope to never really utilize it for uh, replacing 
uh, of recorded content or anything like that. So, um, but you know, you could take a, an audio of yourself that you don't have a video of and create a video yeah. with AI. Um, so you, you know, you can take some of the the content you've created and use an AI produce it as articles, social content, and all kinds of stuff. And so we have a you know such a library of topics and recordings that we've already done the work on. And now you can take that and, and repurpose and, and do things with it. But AI could be a huge part there uh, to leverage. Hey, we've already recorded 300. Uh, we could stop recording and never record again. And, and maybe we can you know, use AI to help us, uh, you know, produce some new content out of that. So, yeah, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, so so how um, that, that leads me to like the the repurposing conversation because that's really rich for folks in the marketing space, right? As always. Yeah. But um, with three hundred episodes under your belt, uh, or three hundred plus, you you now have this huge repository where you can even go meta on your own stuff, right? Where you can be like, I've interviewed three hundred attorneys. Here's the top three things I've picked up from this kind of thing. Yes. Well, yeah, to your point, we've actually even looked at um, ghostwriting or uh, using AI to categorize, uh, basically take all the episodes, transcripts, so that we can be organized. Okay. How many episodes are about uh, law firm operations? How many yeah, episodes exactly. and bucket them and then create like a freaking playbook? You know, hey, attorneys, I've interviewed 300 managing partners. Here's the secrets. Um, yeah. Yeah, I love it. Um, awesome stuff. So yeah, there's endless, endless possibilities. But then I think now that we have the, the 300 episodes, we've, we've had some really high-level guests. Now it's like, okay, how high level can we go? Um, and, and keep using that to leverage the, the best of the best out there. Um, at the same time, though, um, you know, I like to bring on smaller firms that aren't like just the top lawyers in the country, because the top lawyers in the country are going to be very hard to sign as clients. Um, and they, they, they're they so deep into what they have going on, or they have internal. You know, you're a $50 million, $100 million law firm. You're leveraging agencies, maybe as vendors, as specific things, but you're not, le- you're not, you're not relying on them. So, yeah, um, I never so- want to sell to number one. I always want to sell to number four. <laughs> number four is always looking to get in the top three. There you go. I like number that. Number three is a little bit tricky. Number yeah. two and number one, yeah, you, you can't tell me it's something I already have. Uh, yeah, if we do, we do SEO. If like, yeah, I'm on number two, and this guy spending a thousand, a uh, million dollars a month is number one. Do you guys fix that? You know, um, yeah, yeah that's spending a million and one dollars a month. We can might be able to make that happen. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm right there with you. I, you know, for me, it's rewarding to see how we've affected their firm and their personal life and their employees and, and had a big difference. And that means we are mid to lower market. And that's just, that's just where we, we live. Um, so, well, I want to have the superstars here and there. I, I like to have the, the real world, like, Hey, this is someone that you could relate to uh, in a small area that is trying to figure it out. And so I want to make sure that we continue to do that. And, you know, but you know, we now we now we're getting listeners that become clients. That's never happened up until like this past year. Uh, hey, I listen. I've been listening for six months. I'm hiring you guys, and they're not looking to talk to anybody else. Uh, that right there is the ultimate yeah. shift. Yeah, that's and that's something we, we you know I have a graphic for this that we draw out on a regular basis, and it's like look, start start doing what you're doing first, which is make the, make the connections, make the relationships, the audience converting to clients will happen, but that's, you know, at episode number, whatever, but it ain't a single digit number, right? It's not going to be, you know, a double digit number. It's usually when you get the triple digits and that starts to even become a thing. And only when you have the entire ecosystem kind of fleshed out where they can make that transition on their own without a ton of support, People love to yep. buy. They hate to be sold. Here's how you work that. But I think it's yeah. uh, it, it's really um, pretty pretty great that you've gotten to that point where you're now converting audience members 
Um, I definitely want to uh, circle back to be a little bit more, and when you get to episode four hundred and and learn, you know, see what else <laughs> you've learned, right? Because that story just keeps evolving. Uh, but Kevin, for the folks that want to engage Array Digital or want to learn more about how you do what you do, how can they reach out? Uh, what's the preferred form of contact, uh, and who should do so? Well, sure. Uh, you know, uh, our web address is ArrayDigital.com, which forwards to our our long standing one, which is this is Array. Dot com. Uh, but yeah, raiddigital.com would be uh, get you there to, to find my firm and, and what we're about. And you can connect with me uh, there or LinkedIn. Uh, I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. So it's Kevin Daisy, S D A I S E Y. And that's my handle across everything Instagram, whatever. So any of those platforms I, I monitor often and watch and, and um, be a great place to connect. And honestly, I would say any business, any business owner. Um, we niche in law firms. I have another agency that niches in whom services. I have another one that's in wellness and health. Um, but I've worked with clients across many verticals. And so anyone that might need the help uh, or at least has questions about, hey, how do I start and get a nice website and SEO and content? How does that work for me and my business? Happy to look at that for you and at no cost. It can evaluate where you're at and uh, either refer you or point you in the right direction. Um, happy to do that. So, and uh, I guess the the final question as we wrap here in your marketing journey to become the super impressive podcast host that you've become, what are the three biggest lessons you've learned along the way? I forgot about that question. <laughs> ah, you got gotcha. me. Oh, that's good. Um, all right, big lessons. Um, Don't use a soundboard and play the you know a wooga horn sound. That is so played out, right? It's like lesson one, oh, don't man. be. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to do that. So it's not a lesson I learned yet. Don't be that guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, I won't relate it just to podcasts, but I mean, uh, biggest lessons as a business owner. So we're, we're 5 million 40 some people at this point. Okay. Not always the case. I spent a decade at $200,000 or less. Um, and then we spent another four or five years at the million mark. <clears throat> You, the, all the answers are out there. So the biggest lessons I've learned is uh, you can hire people, pay people. You can go to YouTube. You can read books. It's all there. But I think uh, applying pieces of it and actually doing it over time. And there's no secret. There's a lot of little things you got to get right. So if you're running a business, um, you know, there's lots of people that have done it. Talk to them. Get mentors. Talk to people. Get a group uh, mastermind. Uh, and just immerse yourself. But there's a lot of little things you got to do. So either hire people to do them or you got to do them yourself. And that's what it takes. That's just that there's no secret sauce here. Um, that's a big lesson there. Um, the other lesson is, you know, you niching. I'm just going to go with that because um, that has been the biggest thing for our business. We didn't niche for years and we stayed small for for a long time. Once you niche, it's scary because you're like, ah, but what if... What if this one company calls and then, you know, uh, you know, we don't look like we fit them. You got to let that go. Niche, do your research first. Niche, focus, and like go all in. Uh, we only help you and we're perfect for you. Once you have that marketing message and it's clear, um, people will start to to come around to it. So it might not be overnight. But niche is the most important thing I think we've done. Uh, and then uh, third is... You got to get out of your own way. Uh, you have to raise other people up around you. I now have three presidents. Each of my three companies has a president that runs those operations. They're incentivized to do so. They get paid very well. Um, but it takes time to hire that first person and then to give responsibility to anybody. Um, but you've got to constantly be going, okay, who else can I make rich and give the opportunity to? Um, because you you can't keep it all for yourself. You're not going to do it by yourself. And so I think looking for that constantly, who can I promote? Who can I bring in that has that ability that you can just notice from afar and say, hey, we want that person. How do we get them in here? Mm -hmm. um, so I just think, you know, you got to be, you know, creating leaders constantly and getting out of your own way and just moving stuff off your plate. <laughs> and that's hard to do as an entrepreneur. So. Yeah, because you're you're so used to right, like wanting to be able to solve all of the things. I mean, I do it with my kids all the time. Unfortunately, like, 
uh, uh, get out of the way. I'll do, let me just do that for you. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we get frustrated or we get impatient and we know how to do it. So it's like, if you just do, but you got to let them, you got to step back and say, I'm not going to tell you how to do all this stuff. I can't talk to you all day about things. And if you over talk to your team and, and pile, you know, answers to them and, and tell them how to do stuff, then they're never going to. You get learn. no agility. Yeah. Mm-mm. You got to let them fall down. You got to let them do. I mean, you've heard this kind of stuff everywhere, but doing it and actually like living by it and watching it happen, I think is a more, I said, more challenging thing just to say. And I think that's another big lesson too. It's the fourth lesson is wow. you read true. all these books, you listen to, to your podcast, you listen to my podcast. We're telling you, do this, do that, do this, do that. It's just so much noise out there. Influencers, do this, do that. Um, no one does any of the stuff. They don't apply it. They don't actually take it and go, you know what? I am going to do that one thing and do it well and then see what the results are. And so I just think we're just bombarded with great advice, but no one applies it. Read a book, throw it down. That was a great book. Go to a conference, spend five grand, come home, do nothing. Um, I see that very often. Yeah, it's tough, right? Like it's 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 always uh, because I think the underpinning for that is change, right? We want things to be different. I mean, they, they said it in Age of Ultron, <laughs> right? The uh, the Marvel movie. And I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. They say it like you want things to change. You want things to be different, but you don't want them to change. <clears throat> it's it's oh, that right. You keep thinking like, oh yeah, I I definitely want this outcome, uh, but you don't want to. You don't want the discomfort of change required to make that outcome occur. So do you really, you know, is it a wish at that point or is it a reality that you're willing to make happen? And I think, I think you've encapsulated encapsulated very well. Like all of the stuff is out there, Um, you know, for the. You can pay a hundred thousand dollars for it or you get it for free. Same, same damn answer. Yeah. But the, but the (laughs) change, the change that you're willing to, I think that's where the, the money changes hands really is is I want to pay someone to change on my behalf, right? I want to pay someone to help me through this change so it's less threatening or less uncomfortable. Sure. Uh, or if you make that money exchange, you're like, crap, I paid for it. I guess I need to do it now, right? Yeah, so at least there's uh, yourself into a corner. <laughs> it's like if you have an event that's free versus one that costs 50 bucks a ticket, you'll have way more attendance if you charge them $50 a ticket. Yeah. Because people are like, ah, oh, this $50 ticket, I, I guess I got to go. Um, it has value, free. whereas the guys that show up for free, like, well, they didn't even value it enough on their own to like charge me for it. So, how important can it be what they're what they're telling me to be? You know, and it's a weird concept, right? People are like that doesn't make sense. Free, you know, free would have more people. But um, I'll leave you with this, and I'm not sure if you have any other questions, right? But um, you know, I guess a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, he actually runs a law firm and like a mastermind for lawyers. Uh, Brian Glass, his dad's Ben Glass. Uh, very well known guys. Um, you know, one of the things he says is uh, you you mentioned like that you know we want change or we want the different outcome, but when we have to do what's required, we're like ah yeah I don't want to do that. Uh, but he's got a good thing that he mentioned to me recently was um, you set all these goals. I want to do a hundred million dollars by twenty thirty. Okay, well what does that really mean? Uh, or I want to you know I want to run five marathons, uh, whatever it might be. But we we like to just set lofty goals, and we usually don't take a lot of time to think about them. We just, like, pick something. Oh, a million dollars in revenue. That sounds great. Okay, what does that mean when you break it down? And when you hit that, what it, will it really change in your life or your business? And you got to really, like, dig into that and say, do I, is that even really a goal, or I just pick that crap out of, mid, you know, out of there, right? Is it going to change anything? Because it might not. If it won't, then you're not going to accomplish it. You're not even going to care. Yeah, By month yeah. three, you're like, yeah, how'd that goal go? Yeah, that wasn't really a great goal. I just, uh, you know, we're just business as usual. Yeah. So because you're like committed and it's like this is life-changing stuff and you you believe that, then there's a pretty good chance you're going you're gonna to accomplish it. Awesome. Kevin, thank you so much for being on the show. This has been great. And I think um, for those of you that are looking to learn more, um, you know, obviously you've got an entire library of podcasts uh, where you talk to 
uh, attorneys and managing partners and things like that. So I think uh, we'll definitely make sure that that link gets into the show notes so you can find more about Kevin and what he's got to say. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on the show and, you know, just so much to share and, and I'm excited to talk about this stuff all the time. So awesome. anytime, anytime.